Hi friend, I hope you're amazing. And today I want to talk about boredom eating, right? Because I used to eat out of boredom, I don't anymore. And I wanted to talk to you about it because it's so common. Lots of people tell me that they eat because they feel stressed, to avoid feeling stress, but also because on the other end of the spectrum, they feel bored. So let's explore today how we can feed our mind, not our boredom. Right. So what I've noticed is that when we manage boredom in a healthy way, then it's fantastic to avoid uh, weight issues, but also how we can improve our nutrition. And also it's great for emotional well-being. Let me explain a little bit. So when we manage our boredom by not eating, by not snacking, it's fantastic because very often eating um, out of boredom leads us to snacking mindlessly. And of course, if we snack, it means that we're not really hungry uh, in this context. I mean, but we consume empty calories. We consume foods that we actually don't need. And so, of course, it's impacting our overall health. So if we manage the boredom, if we don't eat, then, of course, we end up being healthier. And I'm all for health, which means that if we don't snack, chances are that we're also going to improve our nutrition. And what I mean by that is very often when we feel bored, we don't reach for the cauliflower, we don't reach for the green beans or the roasted chicken or the chicken breast. No, very often, if you're like me, we reach for the unhealthy snacks like chips or cookies or sugary treats, popcorn, etc. And we know that they are not the best food as far as fuel is concerned. They're low in nutritional value, they're high in calories, they may be entertainment for the mouth, they may be fun food, but for the body in the long term, not the best. And they're full of unhealthy fats, added sugars, we know, we know. And yet, right, we tend to eat those foods when we feel bored. So if we don't, then we're probably going to improve our nutrition. And the third thing that I see is that when we manage our boredom eating, then we also learn new things about our emotional well-being, how we can manage our emotion. Because when we turn to food not to feel bored, it means that food becomes a source of comfort, a distraction from a, an emotion that we see as negative boredom. Right? It's as if we shouldn't feel bored. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But then the problem is that because we don't want to feel a negative emotion or something that we interpret as a negative emotion, we actually create a host of uh, other negative emotions like guilt, shame, dissatisfaction. And also, apart from the emotional uh, impact that this is going to have in our life, as we said, and as we all know, it's probably going to have an impact in our potential health, right? like weight gain or increase um, fear of diagnosis, right? So if we tackle, if we handle boredom eating, then we're probably going to feel much better emotionally speaking because this part, the shame, the guilt, the dissatisfaction, is going to be removed. So let's see now how it unfolds. Let's imagine, let's remember, because I used to be bored and when I, well, I'm still bored from time to time, but I don't react to the boredom the same way. What I mean is this, I used to feel bored and when I was feeling bored, this little thought would pop up into my head. Oh, let's have some bread. Let's have some bread with butter. And then I would feel excited, right? And when I felt excited about the idea, about this little sentence in my brain, let's have some bread, then what I would do would, of course, immediately react to the excitement and go to the kitchen and eat some bread with butter. I would not question, out of excitement, I would not question that idea, right? But on, on the contrary, I would focus on that action, eating the bread, so I would focus on the present, but I would not focus, I would completely forget about the future. But right. how I'm going to feel after eating the bread, maybe feel bloated, maybe feel regret, maybe feel disappointed in myself because I didn't do what I really want to do, which is really take the best care of myself. And because I would act this way out of excitement, because I was thinking, let's have some bread, as a result, the impact that this behavior would have in my life is that I would create an entertaining emotional life. And by that, what I mean is that, yes, because of this behavior, I would keep this loop, keep this cycle running of 
feeling regret after eating um, the bread, feeling um, disappointment when I step on the scale the next day, the next week, um, and feeling shame for oh, me I'm still doing something that I don't like. I'm still a person who can't manage her emotion. So I would keep entertaining that loop, even though really it was not serving me, apart from the entertainment, the destruction from the boredom. So all this was happening because I didn't want to feel bored, right? And instead of feeling bored, I was choosing to eat and then go through that cycle of excitement. So feeling happy for a split second, being busy for a split second, but then being busy with regret, disappointment, guilt, etc. Right. So, yes, I was definitely having a very good um, loop to get out of the border. It was working very well to not feel bored, but it was very, working very well against me and my deepest desire to be really healthy, to be also in my own team, to be my best friend, right? It was not working at all in this sense. So what to do, right? So as always, what I love doing after noticing this pattern, what's going on for us is always to question. So how can we question? Well, here are three possibilities, three suggestions, three invitations for you, if you choose to do that. The first question that you could choose to ask yourself would be, how is eating bread solving boredom in the short term? Is it, as I was saying, solving the boredom in the sense that it's a distraction? Right In the moment, it's a distraction. It's a st stimulus. I feel happy when I'm eating because I'm, I'm busy doing something, doing something pleasurable in the moment. So what's happening for you when you're eating out of boredom? How is eating bread or anything else, of course, solving boredom in the short term, right, in the moment? That's the first question. The second question you could choose to ask yourself is, how is eating bread or whatever, solving boredom in the long term? Is it, as it was for me, for you, is it also creating all sorts of emotions that are going to keep you busy and perhaps preventing you from focusing on what really matters? Maybe you really want to take care of your coaching business, but you're also afraid, which is perfectly understandable. You're afraid of changing your identity. You're afraid of reaching out to people that you've never met before. You're afraid of offering your services and maybe being rejected. And so staying in that boredom eating loop is a way to prevent yourself from really truly assessing and taking care of that, that project that really matters to you. Could it be that? Could it be something else? But I'm inviting you to ask yourself a question and to find your own answer about this. How is eating bread solving boredom for you in the long term? Right. So that was question number two. Question number three could be what's wrong with feeling bored? right? Because we see that in this pattern, we're trying to avoid feeling bored, as if it was an unpleasant emotion, as if it was something that we really don't want to go towards, to lean into. But why? Maybe we've never actually asked ourselves why. And of course, chances are that um, there are those stories uh, in our society, and I was listening to a podcast about that earlier on, that yes, we're surrounded with these ideas that being bored potentially means that you're doing nothing and doing nothing is labeled as negative in our society. We're not supposed to be lazy, right? To do nothing because we interpret that as being lazy, right? So if I'm doing something, if I'm eating bread, maybe I'm feeling good about myself because I'm doing something. And look, I'm feeding, feeding myself. I'm taking care of myself, right? So that could be one of the thing of the answers that's going on for you uh, when you're asking yourself what's wrong with feeling bored maybe that could be um, a clue maybe there could be something that's going on for you maybe it's completely different and of course I don't know I don't know but you do know and I trust that you do know right you have all the answers and sometimes it's just that it's not at the surface level you need to think about it a little bit before you can actually come with the answer and all is fine. It's okay. There's no time limit to find your own answers, right? But it's always worth asking yourself a few questions about that. And once we've asked ourselves a, a few questions like that, so first we've noticed what was going on for us. We're eating out of boredom. We think we're doing a good thing, but actually it's working against us. It's not serving us. So 
we question. We question that behavior, we question that pattern, we question the mindset behind the behavior, right? And the third thing, the third step is to decide. And to decide, that means that we're actually deciding that if we're feeling bored, we could choose to think about the boredom a different way. We could choose to feel a different emotion about it. We could choose to behave differently when we feel bored, right? Because boredom is going to happen. If we are a human being, it's part of the, you know, all the colors of the emotional colors that we human beings experience in, the, in our life. Nothing's gone wrong, boredom, I know what you're talking about when you're telling me you feel bored because I've experienced boredom. It's very common. Nothing's wrong with this. But we could decide to react differently to or feeling bored rather than eating, which is still a possibility. There's no bad or wrong about that. But maybe that's not what we want. So if that's not what we want, then what? Well, here are a few possibilities. Here are three thoughts that you could choose to think on purpose when you notice you're feeling bored. The first one is, I can eat bread and do so many other things when I'm bored. I like this sentence because it doesn't mean that eating bread is something bad that we're doing or that we shouldn't do. No, it's an option. There's nothing bad about eating bread, right? But it's not the only possibility. Very often we've chosen that behavior and we've repeated so many times that it's become automatic. The idea here, I can eat bread and do so many other things when I'm bored, the idea is to open up the door to other options. Sure, I can do that, no problem. I've done it so many times, I know what to do. I know it works, if only in the short term. But what else could be fun? What else could be serving me? What else could be um, entertaining me, distracting me, if that's really what I want? And there, there's nothing wrong either about wanting to distract yourself. It's just great to know what's going on. Right? So that's the first possibility, the first thought, optional thought, that you could choose to think. The second one could be, I don't have to do anything when I'm bored. Right? When we're feeling bored, right? it's an emotion. So that technically, there's no emergency, there's no urgency, there's no need to do anything when we feel bored. But sometimes, as I said, sometimes we think that we shouldn't feel bored, that it's a sign that something's gone wrong, that there's something wrong with us. That's why we want to keep busy at all costs, even if, if it's serving, it's uh, not serving us, right? So that could be an option that I'm offering you. I don't have to do anything when I'm bored. Option number three is I can be bored and experience that emotion like any other, right? So we don't have to do anything, but if we want to, we could actually, um, process that emotion. Just focus on that emotion. And there are so many different ways to process that emotion, to really experience it. Um, and that's what I teach my client because nobody told us before, nobody told us at school. So of course, it's a process that we can learn. It's a skill that we can learn. And that's something that we could do instead of trying to solve for the boredom by eating or doing something else. We can just sit with the boredom, experience it, experience that boredom in our body. And that's it. There's nothing for us to do, just experience the boredom and that's it, right? So of course, there are plenty of other ways to see boredom, to think about boredom, to feel about boredom and to behave when we feel bored, right? And also there are plenty of other ways to behave when we feel an emotion. We know that maybe we build that automaticity of overeating when we feel bored or when we feel other emotions that we label as negative, it makes perfect sense. So the invitation that I, the, the suggestions that I gave you, either the questions or the sentences, the thoughts that you could choose to think, they are just optional, right? It's not a one size fit all, that's very important. We're all unique and so you are no exception and that's fine, that's how we like you best, right? You with your uniqueness. But that means also that what I said in this video may not be exactly what you need or what you want, right? So if you want help tailored, tailored to your needs, of course, I'm here for you. You can reach out to me with all the links that are below that video. You can email me, you can uh, book a, a session, you can book a free coaching call, or you can book a strategy call this is really a consult to see if you want to work with me, if we could be a good match so that you could really eat because 
of the way you want to eat, right? Not because you're reacting to your emotions, you want to avoid emotions, just like we saw today, avoiding boredom, right? So all you have to do, this is the next step, is actually reach out to me, maybe send me an email or book a call with me, and I'd be delighted to offer you everything that I've got. It would be my pleasure to share what I've learned all these years. In the meantime, I'm going to wish you a very good day. Take care. Bye.